Okay, in this video I just want to explain how I attach this pivot polisher to, to this uh, cross slide. These are the, this is the cross slide for my Boley lathe. Um, so it's got a T-slot here in it. And this here has got two pegs on the bottom. And you've got to be able to attach this somehow. So I thought, how am I going to do this? I've seen these on sale on eBay uh, quite a number of times. Uh, but they kind of never come with the plate that's part of it. Um, and you kind of need the plate in order to attach it. So I thought, okay, I'll make my own plate. Mm -hmm. So what I did was, I'm going to mess up my finger here. So what I did was I, I took a piece of steel, a pretty big piece of steel, and, and I cut the steel into a, a big chunk, okay? First what I did was I measured the holes, right? This was the tricky part. I measured the hole, one hole on one side, and then I laid the part down and I X'd out where the next hole would be drilled on this side, and then I drilled the, the hole with the drill bits that could drill through steel. So this is steel. Um, I cut the steel using a cross-cut saw with a steel cutting blade. It actually worked pretty well, but I had spent some time in the grinder in order to get the sides relatively even because the, the cross-cut saw kind of tends to go off at an angle when you cut. Um, it's very hard to get an up and down cut on it. So I said, okay, I want that. I want this to be a bit of, there to be a bit of friction on this. So when you put this in, it kind of friction fits um, in these holes. Um, there's a little too much friction here, so I may I may uh, try to to widen these holes just a little tiny bit. But the hardest part of this whole thing is making these holes. Then I took the part and I aligned it somewhat to the, to the slide here, so that when I when it's fixed it's kind of level here. Plus I want the thing not to be too far over as well. I want it to be able to adjust it left and right so I can use the actual lathe, uh, put a collet in and put a put a uh, pulley on there. So then I took a brass um, a brass nut and the brass nut actually had a round head on it and I took the, the brass nut and I put it in my grinder and I ground down the round head and guess what? The nut fit fit the t-slot here absolutely perfect so it fits in there absolutely perfect so it holds that in nicely and this is a one quarter inch nut here so I've got the one quarter inch nut and if I can just put this glue bottle under here to keep this in place here so I got one quarter inch nut here and so I drilled a one quarter inch hole to be aligned here so so and then actually I'll tell you about the finish in a second so this is fairly tight. I could make this um, this hole a little bit looser, but it's fine like this. And then, so I slide it into the T-slot. There's a little bit of a groove there, like that. Um, and let's see if I can loosen this up just a bit. There we go. So that's slid into the T-slot. And I use a wing nut to tighten it, because uh, that way I don't have to have any tools. Wing nuts are great. You just tighten it like this and it's in and then you align it and you torque down on it just a bit now these holes can be even with the plate um, if you want if I widen these holes just a bit this thing will drop all the way down um, I'm not sure whether I'll do that or not right now it's it, I can put it in and it's fairly snug like that it's fairly tight I might widen these to drop it all the way down but basically you have it like that um, so it fits perfectly so and I used a thicker piece of metal here. That way, the width of that metal will prevent this from rocking back and forth. Because it's not, there's no way it's going to do any rocking with when it's in here. It's stable as heck, right? And there's not a lot of force on here either. So I, so I don't, I could push this down a little further. Like I can actually just basically rock it down a little bit further like that. Um, and so that's pretty, that's, that's a good fit right there. Um, and I can adjust the uh, slot here so I can I can actually move this so it's level like that with the back the back part and then this then these these pegs will ground out on the on the uh, on the actual uh, slide itself right so so anyway so now it's all ready um, and I can do some fine-tune adjustments this way and I can adjust it this way to move it in or out to tighten the whatever belt I decide to use I'll probably use a string or something because this is really small or really small shoelace anyway so that's how I did this uh, I could buy these plates on on eBay but they cost a lot of money 
um, for what you get and if you've got just basic capability all you need is a some kind of a saw that saws this very hard to find bandsaw uh, blades that saw um, metal because everybody seems to buy them out um, and again I used a, uh, a crosscut saw to saw this and it worked just fine and then I used a uh, I basically ground it down on the edges and the paint I'm using on this is called hammer paint so I used hammer paint on it and it looks like it's a little tiny hammer kind of hit it and so it's an unfinished uh, it's a finished paint it's a hammer paint the brand I use is both a primer and a paint so you don't have to bother priming it and I just sprayed it I hung it on a, uh, a wire I used a coat hanger wire and edged it and held it and then just rotated it a few times and sprayed it very quickly and it dries in a day and then you've got yourself uh, a nice uh, bracket to hold your pivot polisher and that's it so thanks a lot hopefully this uh, video was useful and i'm starting to make my own tools for my lathe which is kind of cool